extinction from space. Asteroids! We preside Abraham from National Geographic. Hey, sorry, congestion. Um, enjoy. Welcome back to the Cosmic Companion. This is our first episode in a few weeks, and I'm delighted to see you again. This week, we open up a new series talking about extinction from space. This week, asteroids. <laughs> We're me talking with paleontologist Nazir Abraham from the University of Portsmouth and National Geographic about the most famous asteroid impact of them all. No! But this event 66 million years ago, which ended the age of dinosaurs, was far from our own, the only run-in our planet has had with wayward mountains in space. The story of Earth and asteroids begins two billion years ago. Now, before multicellular life, the region we now know as Free State South Africa was rocked by a massive Nay, gargantuan explosion. Even today, the Brightfoot crater created by this event still stretches 190 kilometers across. That is over 534,000 long-tailed weasels stretched end to end, including the tails, for those of you still refusing to use metric. A mere 200 million years later, Ontario got body checked by an asteroid. Today, the Sudbury uh, Basin reaches 130 kilometers or nearly 87,000 average hockey sticks in length. No one knows if the asteroid was given a penalty for roughing. Like Ackerman in Australia sits in the middle of a massive depression in the ground formed in an instant 580 million years ago. At the time, life had just begun to proliferate beyond simple sponges. More complex life forms began to swim, crawl, and tumble their way around the ancient aquatic environment. Yet, modern humans would find much of this life to be alien, holding little resemblance to modern life forms. Apparently, even 364 million years ago, everything in Australia was out to kill you. A second asteroid slammed into Western Australia, forming the now subsurface Woodley Crater. Canada got struck again, this time in Quebec, 215 million years ago, forming Manicogan Crater. South Africa suffered a major hit 145 million years before our time. Then Russia saw its first known major strike a little over 70 million years ago. Now, remember the country of Russia. It's going to come up again later. The most famous of all these asteroid strikes came down roughly 66 million years ago in Yucatan, Mexico, ending the age of dinosaurs. Or did it? journey back in time with us as we talk with National Geographic paleontologist Nazir Abraham about dinosaurs, the fossil record, and extinction by asteroid. This week on The Cosmic Companion, we are delighted to be joined by Dr. Nazar Ebrahim. He is a paleontologist at the University of Portsmouth, and he's here to talk to us about everybody's favorite extinct animals, the dinosaurs. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Nazar. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, it's great having you. So first of all, why do we love dinosaurs so much? Yeah, I think I think dinosaurs are definitely our favorite extinct animals. I would say, you know, for many people, they're actually our favorite animals, full stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think the reason for this is that, I mean, dinosaurs are spectacular animals. Um, and they are very, very different from the animals that uh, we might see in a zoo today, for example, right? I mean, there's nothing like a T-Rex around today. There's nothing like a Brachiosaurus. I know you haven't um, been chased by a goose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but just think about that goose at a much larger size. Um, 
And, you know, in some ways, they're like the dragons from our mythology, right. except the dinosaurs, of course, are real. Mm -hmm. That's fabulous. And so they ruled Earth for somewhere around 160 million years. What, what, what was it that made them so successful? It's a good question. And, and we do not really have... Um, all the answers because of course mammals appeared at around the same time as the first dinosaurs and so you know our own little furry ancestors lived quite literally in the shadows of the dinosaurs for a very very long time and we mammals only got our lucky break at the end of the cretaceous right, right. and you know i think it's interesting because we always have this sense of superiority for from mammals we always think well because we are mammals you know i mean we always think humans are very special and of course mammals therefore have to be you know superior to most other groups of animals but then you know you've got the dinosaurs and dinosaurs uh, you know represent a global success story it's nature one of nature's greatest success stories full stop Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were everywhere. You know, we have polar dinosaurs, we have Australian dinosaurs, we have dinosaurs from China, Argentina, Europe, you know, you name it. And that's pretty remarkable because they lived on, a, on an evolving planet uh, with moving continents. And, you know, it's at times volcanism on a scale that we cannot even begin to imagine, mm. you know, sea level changes. I mean, really massive sea level changes, fluctuations in climate. And they remained dominant uh, through all of this. And that's, that's pretty remarkable. Mm. And, uh, you know, of course, dinosaurs really caught, you know, the, the human really caught interest in 1993 among a lot of people when Jurassic Park was released. Um, but we've learned a whole lot about dinosaurs since then. Um, how has our knowledge about these animals changed during that time? Well, we now have a much better understanding of animals, uh, of, of dinosaurs as living animals, right? I mean, we, um, we peer inside the brains of dinosaurs um, using CT scanning to, to understand the internal anatomy of their skulls. Um, we have dinosaur embryos. We know a lot more about uh, the way that dinosaurs were growing. Um, we have a much better understanding of their physiology. We now know that many dinosaurs were almost certainly quote unquote warm blooded. Um, and, you know, we're able to answer all sorts of questions we never thought we'd be able to answer. Um, one of the really big, um, you know, chapters in, 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 the, in the history of dinosaur research is, of course, um, the discovery of feathered dinosaurs, right? We now know that many dinosaurs had feathers or feather like structures. And initially, those things were not used for flight. They were used for insulation to keep warm um, or maybe for display in some animals like a peacock's tail. Um, and uh, we now also know that, uh, you know, there's not a shadow of a doubt that birds are direct descendants of small predatory dinosaurs. So birds are, strictly speaking, dinosaurs. So and that's an interesting thing to ponder because it means that this one branch of the dinosaur tree made it through the extinction event. And there are more bird species than mammal species in the world today. So in some ways, you could say we're still kind of in an age of dinosaurs. Hmm. Hmm. That's fascinating. And so how I need to get back to, you know, that terrible Thursday when the when the asteroid hit. But <laughs> first, I mean, but first, like when it did, what was it that um what was it just that the dinosaurs with bird like characteristics or preferential preferentially survived? Were they able to get to, you know, the mountaintops where they get sun and vegetation or how, how did, what happened there? How did that actually unfold? No, we know that many um, feathered dinosaurs and birds also uh, went extinct, right? So right. we know that size was an important factor in determining which lineages would survive and, and which ones wouldn't. But the thing about mass extinctions is that luck is also an important factor. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's, you know, and then of course the impact affected some, the immediate aftermath Im impacted some animals more than others, you know, we're, we're now getting closer to a, um, 
um, kind of holistic understanding of the aftermath of, of the uh, impact. Um, but there's still a lot of mysteries, right? I mean, and, you know, also in terms of the recovery after the, uh, the impact. And that, of course, has a lot of relevance today. I mean, people often ask things like, oh, why should we care about paleontology and why should we care about extinct life? But of course, um, you know, a better understanding of mass extinctions and, you know, fluctuations in climate and so on um, is really important, right? I mean, we are in the middle of a mass extinction right now. Um, and this one is not caused by a meteorite or volcanoes. It's, it's caused by, uh, by, by us, the Homo sapiens, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and so there's a lot we can learn, learn um, you know, from paleontology for sure. Hmm. So can you take us back 66 million years to, you know, to that day when the asteroid hit? What, what happened? What would it have liked to have been a dinosaur around that time? Well, it depends where you are in the world. But of All course, right. if you're anywhere near the actual impact, it would have been pretty much sudden death, right? right I mean, yeah, short you know, story there. The after effects would, <laughs> would have included things like massive tsunamis, uh, wildfires, you know, uh, pressure wave on a scale that we cannot even begin to imagine. Um, it would have been, in some cases, a very sudden death, and in, in, in other cases, uh, um, a pretty cruel death. Uh, I think, you know, it's um, dinosaurs. When we think of dinosaurs, we do think of extinction, right? It's, it's kind right. of like the idea that these super dominant animals, some of which were so enormous, can just go extinct is, is you know, something that, that really gets us thinking, right? But um, this was, you know, in many ways, um, like a perfect storm, right? I mean, there's everything from the geology of the area where the meteorite hits to the angle, you know, everything was kind of stacked against the dinosaurs, right? It's kind of like, you know, as, as, as if the forces of nature conspired against the dinosaurs. And so, um, but it's the kind of event that we can publish papers on and we can try to understand, but the reality is it's, it's just the scale of the destruction would have been so enormous you can't really wrap your head around it, right? I mean, you know, people can tell you, oh, it's it's a lot more powerful than detonating all the nuclear bombs in the world all at once, right? But we, we don't know what that would be like, you know what I mean? Right, I mean, right, there's no scale, very, right? Yeah, it's it's just, um, you know, it's it's it was certainly a very fateful day. But of course, you know, you and I wouldn't be uh, here having this conversation if this uh, had not happened, right? Um, there's a, there was a, a paleontologist, a Canadian paleontologist, Dale Russell, who tried to imagine what dinosaurs would look like or would have looked like if they had not, you know, if all of this had not happened, right? Mm -hmm. And so he constructed this thing called the dinosauroid, which is this alien looking thing that kind of looks a little dinosaurian, but it's got big eyes, it kind of looks a bit, you know, it's, it's kind of a humanoid creature. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an interesting thought experiment, but I think it's a little flawed. We always have this tendency to think of humanoid creatures when we imagine right. extraterrestrials or whatever. Mm -hmm. Of course, again, we're kind of a little biased. We think that our right. anatomical arrangement and blueprint is somewhat, somehow, you know, <laughs> close to the peak. It's kind of like, you know, well, that's, of course, not true. And, it, and in a way, we do know what dinosaurs ended up looking like, you know, that made it through the extinction event and those animals are birds, right? I mean, um, so yeah, but it's, it's, uh, it's without a shadow of a doubt, the, uh, you know, the mass extinction that generates the highest level of, of public interest for sure. Hmm. And what I find interesting, um, well, actually I'd like to ask this first is, um, how, could you picture, do you, how do you think that would have turned out? Would they have been more humanoid or could they have been just totally something bird-like, you know, over by, by this time? Or would they have designed digital watches and cities and factories and be choking on their own smog? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good question. And it's a, it's an interesting one, you know, I mean, um, when you look at the series of events that occurred on, on our human, you know, mammal line, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of rather unpredictable. And of course there are many different 
I mean, if we're talking about things like uh, intelligence, for example, there are many different ways to measure this and there are many different ways to, um, from intelligence to manifest itself, right? In birds and whales and, and what have you, right? Right, right. Um, and so, and of course, you know, we know that some dinosaurs had fairly large brains um, comparable to, to, you know, some birds today. And of course, we know that some birds are very clever, right? I mean, I'm sure you've seen ravens and crows, you know, doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we kind of have this little glimpse where we kind of see what happened to the dinosaurs, right? If you see a pigeon on the street, you know, this is a pretty close relative to T-Rex. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's really hard to speculate because evolution is um, very often very unpredictable, um, which I think is, is sometimes we have a hard time wrapping our head around this. I think it's really hard for us to accept that essentially it's this incredible series of accidents that kind of led to us, right? We like to right. see some kind of plan and some kind of, you know, path. Um, that's kind of predetermined almost, but that's not the way it works, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fascinating. And so what do you think are people's biggest misconceptions about dinosaurs? Well, I think, you know, um, looking at dinosaurs as kind of symbols of failure is obviously a big one. I think even today, we still have this... Um, problem that that uh you know when if you call a, a politician a dinosaur it's not supposed it's not meant as a compliment typically right it should be should be a compliment i think that's one of the big ones it really bugs me that people still have this idea of dinosaurs as kind of failures of evolution i think that's uh that's a real problem i think that's that's probably the biggest one hmm Fascinating. And so finally, what are the greatest mysteries, the greatest unanswered questions that we still have about these magnificent animals? Well, I think um, we, there are certain things we just don't know all that much about. Um, that includes things like, you know, vocalizations. What did dinosaurs actually sound like? And I don't know if we'll be able to figure this out one day. Um, there's some approaches you can take, but it's a tricky one. Um, we are, um, st there's still uh, many mysteries in terms of their overall um, diversity. You know, I mean, we just found out that some dinosaurs were essentially, you know, river monsters, largely aquatic dinosaurs. You know, we never thought that that was possible. Um, so it would be interesting to see what other kinds of, um, you know, ecomorphologies we'll find in dinosaurs, what kinds of crazy adaptations, um, how diverse were they really? Um, because we're just scratching the surface. I mean, you know, the, most of the dinosaurs that can be discovered have not been unearthed yet. Right. Fabulous. Well, thanks so much for being on the show, Nizar. It was great talking with you. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. And that was Dr. Nizar Ibrahim, paleontologist at the University of Portsmouth. Since the life plan of dinosaurs started changing toward a birdhouse-centered model 66 million years ago, the Earth has seen some additional strikes by asteroids, especially 35 million years ago in Russia, again, and Virginia, near Washington, D.C. Similar strikes have been seen in the modern age. The Tunguska explosion on the 30th of June, 1908 in, let's see. Oh yeah, Russia destroyed over 2,000 square meters of forest. That's nearly twice the size of Times Square. Less than a decade ago on 15th of February, 2013, an asteroid about 20 meters across exploded over the city of Chiblany, Chelyabinsk in Russia. Although this body exploded in the atmosphere, never hitting the city of 1.15 million, more than 1,600 people were hospitalized with injuries, mostly from shattered glass due to the event. Now, the Earth will be struck time and again by sizable asteroids from space in the future. 
the largest of these events are capable of causing widespread extinctions of species. <laughs> the amount of damage done will depend on the mass, composition, and velocity of the impactor, as well as the angle at which it strikes Earth. Such a body also has roughly a 75% chance of striking an ocean. Good if you want to avoid slamming into cities, but bad if you don't happen to like tidal waves. Now, dinosaurs never developed a space program. That was a mistake. Now their descendants are stuck in little cages, being tormented by a house cat named Mrs. Pufferstuff. Do you want that to happen to the human race? No. Support planetary defense, right? Right. Join us next week when we look at the future of everything. We're going to be joined by children's science author Stephanie Drimmer from National Geographic. We may be talking about the future of technology, people, and society as we discuss her newest book, Ultimate Book of the Future. Make sure to join us starting on the 26th of July at the Cosmic Companion anywhere online. If you enjoyed this episode, please comment, donate, and share this episode all over your favorite social media. Clear skies.